Furioso live up to the dizzying heights of Mad Max Fury Road? Well, you're in the right place, so buckle in. Now, before I jump into my review of Furiosa, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, plenty more movie reviews headed your way, and also some really fun movie-related content, so thank you in advance if you do happen to subscribe. Now, Furiosa is a prequel to Mad Max Fury Road, following, of course, the titular Furiosa, who is not played here by Charlize Theron, like in the original film, but it is played by Anya Taylor-Joy, and we see her as a young girl, all the way up into being a young woman, where her mother is killed and taken away from her by an evil, sinister man named Dementis, who's played here by Chris Hemsworth. So she vows to get her revenge one way or another in this furious prequel to Mad Max Fury Road. Now, I, of course, saw Mad Max Fury Road back in 2015 and was just blown away. I mean, that movie left my jaw on the floor. I just, every time I watch it, I think to myself, how did this movie get made? How did they do this? How did, how did they do that? Why is this movie so fucking good? Why can't I stop watching it? These are the questions I always ponder when it comes to Mad Max Fury Road. And naturally, my expectations were sky high for Furiosa, especially with this cast and also George Miller returning to direct. Now, I'm not usually a prequel guy, but I was actually interested in the story of Furiosa and her backstory. Usually, I like the mystique. I like the allure of not knowing a character's origin story if it's not, you know, painted out for us in the original movies or movie. But in this case, I did really want to see how Furiosa became the character that we met in Fury Road and came to really know and love and just... Love is a badass. Now, I was told by a few people going in not to expect a film like Mad Max Fury Road, so that definitely helped me dial in my expectations correctly, and I do implore you, please do not go into this movie thinking it's going to be just like Mad Max Fury Road, because it really is not. This is not like one extended car chase. This is not, you know, wall-to-wall -wall action. This is a movie that has a story on its mind. It's a more character-driven film. Yes, it has, you know, some big action set pieces, but it is much more about character and Furiosa's story, so definitely know that going into this movie. It is not like Mad Max Fury Road. It is a different animal, but still a pretty damn compelling one at that. Now, let me answer the big question you're probably wondering, the question that I posed at the beginning of this review, is this movie as good as Mad Max Fury Road? No, it's, it's nowhere near as good as Mad Max Fury Road, but I still think on its own, I think it's still a very entertaining, worthwhile watch that I think recontextualizes Mad Max Fury Road in a way that enhances that movie and makes it even better the next time you go and watch it. And having just re-watched Mad Max Fury Road, I think that this prequel does a great job connecting to that film, and you could really see how this would be a great double bill of watching Furiosa and then watching Fury Road and being really fully satisfied and getting one hell of a movie meal. Now, while this movie isn't perfect and does have a couple big issues, at least for me, let me talk about what works in this movie, because there's a ton of it. First and foremost, the performances really solid here. I think Ani Taylor-Joy is delivering some really solid work here. She doesn't get a ton of dialogue to work with, like Charlize Theron. A lot of her performance is through the eyes and through her physical performance, and I think she's really good in that regard, and she's delivering a very capable performance here. But let me get to the, the showstopper here, and that is Chris freaking Hemsworth, people. Yes, we all know and love him as Thor, the god of thunder, but my favorite kind of Chris Hemsworth is villain Chris Hemsworth. He hasn't done it often, but when he has... He's so good as a villain. I mean, if you don't believe me, you know, if you haven't seen this movie yet, you know, if you haven't seen Bad Times at the El Royale, super underrated film, he's incredible in that movie as, you know, a villainous cult leader type. Amazing. But this, this is his masterpiece performance. This is by far and away the best Chris Hemsworth performance. He is so freaking good in this movie. He is magnetic charming, unpredictable, wild, just off the leash in the best ways possible. And I for completely forgot it was Chris Hemsworth for the, you know, big majority of the film. And I just, I loved everything he was doing here. And he was just a fascinating character to watch. I'm glad that he got to chew up the scenery and get as much screen time as he did. And he's by far and away the highlight of the film. He's just worth seeing the movie for alone. And George Miller, of course, once again, is behind the camera. And I love his camera work. There's just such energy there. There's just such thoughtful camera movements that make the action sequences all the more intense and visceral. And there are a couple set pieces in this movie that, like in Fury Road, are jaw droppers. But I do not think that the action in this film is anywhere near as good as Fury Road. But let's face it, it's going to be hard for <laughs> George Miller or just any action director out there to top the action in that film. But still, the action in this movie is very entertaining, super well filmed, really intense and exciting. 
So I think fans of the franchise are really going to enjoy the set pieces in this film. But like I said, I do think this is a more character-driven movie, and I think Miller does a good job slowing things down so that we can actually enjoy that character work and really become invested in Furiosa's revenge story here. Because that is the emotional driving force of this movie. If we don't have that anger like Furiosa does, if we don't feel that pain, that heartbreak, that heartache, that, that anguish, you know, it, it, this movie doesn't work, and it's not nearly as powerful as it could be. But between Anya Taylor-Joy's performance and Miller's assured direction here and some really solid character work and character building moments that are, you know, sprinkled throughout the course of this movie, this is a revenge tale that works albeit with some flaws. And I really like that we expanded the world here. We got to explore more of the wasteland, unlike in Mad Max Fury Road, which is really maybe one or two, you know, big locations and it kind of just felt like one long extended chase scene, granted one incredible <laughs> long extended chase sequence. But here we get to visit different locations and we get a lot more world building where the world feels more expansive and more lived in. You know, the wasteland just feels just far more epic in scope. But this movie does have some issues. I do think this movie's far too long. It clocks in at about two and a half hours. And unlike Mad Max Fury Road, which I felt like flew by and I didn't feel the length at all, this one you really do. And I don't know what it is. Maybe you guys can agree with me here or maybe you've had a similar experience, but I feel like when movies cut to a black screen with like chapter two <laughs> or chapter three, I feel like it just like inherently makes your movie feel <laughs> longer. It's just a side note. I don't know if it's just, if it's just me, but every movie I watch like that, I don't know, for some reason, it just always makes it feel longer. I don't know, I'm a weirdo. But yeah, this movie's far too long. I do feel like there are some scenes that go on way too long, or some scenes that really just don't feel necessary to the story and don't really add much to the film. I definitely feel like you could have trimmed at least 15 to 20 minutes out of this movie and made it a much tighter, leaner experience. And also, I just feel like it didn't have the energy and propulsion that Fury Road did. And I understand that this movie is trying to do something different. It's trying to be more character-driven. It's, you know, it's trying to really tell the story of Furiosa and not just give you a wall-to-wall -wall action. But there was just something about the vitality and just the intensity of every frame in Fury Road that was so infectious and so enveloping, I wanted to feel that same kind of energy here, and I just didn't. And as a result, the movie did feel a little bit sluggish here and there, and it just, it felt like it just wasn't the same. You know, we're in the same world, but it didn't feel quite as good as the last time, like that lightning in a bottle kind of experience. But all in all, I think Furiosa, if you're a fan of the Mad Max movies, you know, especially if you're a fan of Mad Max Fury Road, just go in with the right expectations, and I think you'll really enjoy Furiosa and enjoy it for what it is. This is definitely one of the better prequels that you're going to see come around the bend in quite some time. And while it may not reach the heights of Mad Max Fury Road, I think it enhances the viewing experience of that movie because of how it ties in directly to that film's story and to Furiosa herself. And I think this is a world that I really do want to keep exploring, and I think Miller's got the, that energy, he's got that talent, he's got, you know, that wheelhouse of his to make more stories in this world and just make them increasingly more engrossing. So I, I might have left this movie a little bit disappointed, but in the end, I still enjoyed the movie for what it is, and it definitely has the potential to grow on me with subsequent viewings. I just didn't love the movie, but I did enjoy a whole lot of it. So in the end, I'm gonna give Furiosa three and a half out of five stars. I don't think it's a masterpiece. I didn't love it as much as Mad Max Fury Road, but I still really enjoyed it for what it was. I really enjoyed the story of Furiosa and getting to know her and to learn her backstory. And I think there's some really great action sequences that do make it feel worthwhile. And that performance from Chris Hemsworth is just unbelievable and needs to be seen to be truly believed. So yeah, it's not perfect, but it's still very entertaining and definitely one of the better action movies you're going to see out there right now. I mean, George Miller is unique and one of a kind, and he's showing that once again here with Furiosa. So that is my review of Furiosa. Really hope you enjoyed it. Really hope you take it into consideration if you're thinking about seeing this movie or not. And if you have seen it, let me know in the comments below what you thought of it. If you loved it, hated it, felt middle of the road on it, let me know in the comment section below. And you can follow me on social media if you look down below. Those are my handles. They'll be in the description of this video as well. And make sure to follow my film podcast, Film on Tap, where every other week I get together with my buddies. We talk about movie news, trailers, we review movies. We go on some weird, wild, hilarious tangents. It's so much fun. Links to that in the description as well. And until next time, everybody, I'm Tom Chattelbash, YouTube's most reliable movie critic.